everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now today we are going to be pouring another kilo bar of silver. You guys seem to absolutely love these. Thank you to everybody who watched last week's video pouring the huge shipwreck silver bar that you see on the left here. That was a fun, fun bar to make, let me tell you, and it's come out really well. We've got bar number one on the right, bar number two on the left, and we've got one ounce of silver in the middle, which is shortly going to join 33 other ounces of silver and form, hopefully, a pretty looking kilo bar. Now, some of you might be looking at this coin and thinking, well, why on earth are we going to melt down this leopard coin? Well, this is a commissioned piece from a Silver Forum member who decided that it would be a fun thing to do to crown off his kilo silver bar with this 100 Sedis Leopard. That's right, this is the Mint Era version of these Leopard coins, 100 Sedis. And he has it in his mind to name this bar the bar that shall not be named in honour of this coin, which has more commonly become known as the coin which shall not be named over on the Silver Forum. Nuts and bolts of it is, this coin had some ridiculous hype when it came out because of its mint era status with this 100 Sedis. I don't know why I'm being so careful holding it because I'm about to throw it into a pile of melton silver. Um, but look, it's got 100 Sedis on there. That is the error that should read five Sedis. So there was a whole big hype about these coins, about people rushing out and buying them and spending lots of money on them. And they really did, uh, you know, it was one of those things where people got a bit sick of all of the hype about them. Subsequently, they've performed pretty well as investment coins. If you managed to pick them up uh, like I did right at the start without realizing they were mint errors and paying 20 quid for them, you know, they can be selling now for 45, 50 pounds if you're lucky. But if you were one of those people who jumped on that hype train and bought them at 35, 40, 45, 50 pounds at uh, the time you bought them, there's not much more value that you can get from them. So that owner has decided to pop it into a big, big chunky pile of molten silver to crown off his one kilo bar. So that's what we're going to do with this. We're gonna head on over to the silver pouring bench now and uh, I'll show you that coin dropping into the silver because it's very like Lord of the Rings moment style. It's uh, like the ring dropping into the molten lava. It's really fun. Anyway, I'll catch you over at the silver pouring bench and hopefully we'll pour a really nice looking kilo bar of silver. Okay, here we are at the pouring bench, also known as my kitchen hob. And I thought today I'd give a bit of a whistle-stop tour of some of the bits and bobs that we're going to use today to create this one kilo bar. The first thing you'll notice is, of course, the mold. This is the kilo bar mold. It's a big, chunky, thick-walled mold, which is really important when you're pouring a kilo of molten silver. You want to have really thick walls to help protect the integrity of the mold. Now, to put that in perspective, here is the one ounce bar mold that I've been using for a couple of years and the 100 gram bar mold that we've been also been using for a couple of years. So you can really see the size difference there. Uh, you know, these big kilo bars, they really do get my heart racing. There's obviously safety concerns over pouring a kilo of silver, but because of the size of this, you really do only get one shot at them. If they come out and they're going to look ugly, I'm a perfectionist, I will want to make sure that somebody gets a really nice tasty looking kilo bar. So hopefully it's going to come out all right. If it doesn't, we're going to have to hang on to an ugly lump of silver for the next couple of years before we get the equipment needed to melt it down again, because I just don't have the space or equipment to do that. So it really is a one time only deal today. Hopefully all will go OK. Now this silver here is some of the silver that we're going to be using to pour this kilo bar. This is silver casting grain, it's 999 pure, it was supplied by the European Mint, uh, long term supplier of my silver shot. Really, really high quality stuff and I found that this pours really nicely to make some really very pretty ripples. And then of course we're going to crown off 34 ounces of that silver shot with one additional ounce, the leopard, and that is going to be dropped into the molten silver which is contained within the graphite crucible and this is the last kind of piece of equipment that we're going to use i suppose today now this is not the actual one we're going to use we've already got some silver in the furnace heating up as we speak but to put things into size perspective once again here is the regular size graphite crucible that i'd use this has a capacity of about 
maybe 14, 13, 14 ounces, and then the really small one, it's like a like a Russian doll here with them all stacked up on top of each other, but then the small one here, which is what I got started with, holds maybe two and a half to three ounces. So you can really see the step up in size there, it's quite scary, uh, and as you can see, the coins fit in quite nicely there, so we don't need to chop them up or anything like that. And the really good thing about using shot is that you can measure out exact amounts that you want to put in there. So if you wanted to make a 10.43 ounce bar, you can just simply put 10.43 ounces in. Now you'll notice that I said that we're going to be using approximately 35 ounces worth of silver today. Now I do that because the method by which I pour silver is I pour and I use my judgment and kind of feel of what the bar looks like to stop short uh, so that all of the graphite schmutz that comes out of the bar at the other end doesn't pollute it. Um, because you'll find the last dredges of the silver that comes out often is not particularly attractive and it ruins the bar. So that's what we are going to be doing today. So hopefully with 34, 35 ounces worth of silver in the crucible, when we pour it in and stop short, we'll have 32.15 plus and then it gets to be in the kilo plus series. So next thing to do is just wait for the silver to melt down and then plonk in the leopard. So I'll catch you in a moment. So here we have the moment that we've all been waiting for, the Isildur moment. I've got the leopard ready to drop into the molten silver. It's very much cast it into the fire. And there you go, in it goes. That little flame spark there is just some of the uh, oils on it, I think, from my fingers. Nothing to worry about. So there we go, it's in. Now we've just got to wait for it to come up to temperature and then it's time to pour the kilo of silver. Number three in the Kilo Plus series. And hopefully it'll turn out just fine. Okay, here we go. This is all nice and hot. Silver is melted. Time to pour the kilo. Another good one, thank goodness for that. And it's not quite coming out, but the dregs, there we go. The dregs are out and things are looking pretty good. I'm very happy with the way that one's turned out. It's got a nice amount of ripples on it. Right, let me just sort out this red hot crucible before I drop it anywhere. Brilliant. There we go, look at that. Nice little overpour flow there. Seems to be the signature on these bars. There's a little one on each of them, but I'm really happy with that. It's come out really clean. The silver shot really does come out so nicely. Now this is like roasty, toasty warm, so I'm just gonna leave it to cool off and then I'll get it out of the mold and meet you back over at the table and we can have a good close look at it. But I think that is pretty perfect, I have to say. So there we go, kilo number three done. So here we have it, Kilo Plus bar number three nestled between its two older brothers, one and two, and oh my goodness, I am so, so happy with the way that this has turned out. The ripples are to die for, they're magical. The lovely elongated ripple pool here with this wave crashing up against the side of the bar. Oh, simply stunning, and I'm so happy with it. Came out to 1,061 grams, so well over that kilo minimum threshold that I like to look for. Not a record pour, that still goes to the shipwreck silver bar, but oh, not that I should have favorites, but I do think this is my all time favorite piece I've ever made. You know, the first kilo bar is something incredibly special that will live with me forever, and the shipwreck silver bar is pretty damn cool, but these ripples are just setting my heart on fire. Look at that. Now there was some graphite pollution in the middle. I have cleaned that up and it's looking really very cool indeed. Not as much graphite came out as the shipwreck bar, but oh, and this wave, this wave crashing up against the side of the uh, of the mold is just stunning. It's a really pronounced feature, but it's such a cool one. I absolutely love it. It's gonna be so hard to say goodbye to this bar when I do send it off to its new owner 
in a couple of weeks. Great striations up the side as well and you can see how the silver's cooled and formed as it was layered. Oh, simply stunning. Nice smooth side for the laser etched hallmark which we're going to have put on in the next couple of weeks and then a nice smooth bottom for it to have all of its particulars stamped on there. Now this bar is going to be named the bar that shall not be named which is a little bit of an oxymoron I have to admit because we're naming a bar the bar that should not be named but hey ho that's what we've decided to do. But as I've said with all of the other bars we've made in this Kilo Plus series I think it'd be kind of fun to get some suggestions from you guys on what this bar could or should be named if it wasn't that. I know its new owner would probably get a few chuckles and giggles out of some of the more creative and funny names that you guys can come up with, so feel free to comment down below. Oh, I'm just getting hypnotized by this bar, it's absolutely awesome. Now you guys have probably noticed that uh, we've got now two of these that haven't been finished and stamped up yet and in fact we've been churning out now it seems these kilo plus bars these last couple of weekends the second weekend in a row it's almost becoming sort of silver kilo Sundays uh, and we've got one more to come that is the great news so next Sunday we'll be showcasing another silver kilo plus pour I haven't poured it yet so I don't know how it's going to come out hopefully it'll look as good as these bars here we can but hope, but that is going to come out next Sunday. And then those three, numbers two, three, and four, as it will be, will be going up to the Edinburgh Assay Office for laser etched hallmarking, which is absolutely stunning. That's what we're going to do. When they're back from hallmarking, I'll stamp all of the particulars on the bottom of the bar. And then I will be very fortunate for a short period of time to have in my possession all four of these kilo plus bars, all four brothers and sisters, whatever you want to call them, they'll be together for the last time before I send them out to their new owners, which will be a sad day for me, I have to say. So if you ever needed a better excuse to subscribe to my channel than that, then, well, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. If you are and you want to get notifications, hit the alarm bell as well. Now, if you would like to commission one of these Kilo Plus bars, it's very important for you to know that I'm not pouring any of these for just general sale. You have to get in touch and commission one. The uh, process of purchasing the silver, a little bit complicated, but essentially you have to supply the silver. So you buy it from either the European Mint or supply it to me directly, and then you pay me for my time and expenses and the hallmarking to have it made. That's how we're working with it. So it's a little bit of a complicated process, but it is easy to be done. As you can see, we've had three commissions done and dusted already. We've got one more still to come, and then we've got a further kilo piece to make, which has already been commissioned, bar number five. But that is going to be something a little bit different. So we will be sharing that in due course. But if you're interested, just let me know. Just get in touch. My email address is byb at backyardbullion.com. And you can have yourself a kilo plus bar of poured silver from us here in the United Kingdom. We ship worldwide, even with these big giant bars, so feel free to get in touch. That's about it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know I've enjoyed it. It's been a nerve wracking and exhilarating time making these bars. We've got one more to come next week. If you enjoyed the video, put a thumbs up on it. It really does help share our video through the YouTube algorithm. Also commenting on this video does as well. So let us know your thoughts on this bar, on the three together, three stooges together. They're just so awesome. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great week ahead. Please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.